Okay, well, apparently this has been talked about in the past uh, day or so. And as everybody has been saying, it's talked about this, it's been brewing for a while. But apparently, as we found out on some various wrestling sites, and Kong, yes, I said Kong, has even mentioned it herself. Uh, awesome Kong is apparently no longer part of TNA. And uh, apparently, according to some wrestling sites, it has been officially announced that TNA has granted her her release. Now, some people, like Tristan Goley and some other fans out there, even I will agree, this was not a good move for TNA. But then again, it shouldn't really, it shouldn't really come as a shocker to anybody. I mean, now that you got Bischoff and Hogan in there, it really shouldn't come much as a shock because let's let me take you back in time, if you will. Let me take you back in time to 1995-1996 when WCW tried to establish a women's division centered around Medusa. What happened? Instead of doing the smart thing back then and letting Medusa become the first WCW Women's Champion, they instead put the title on a Japanese wrestler. I can't think of what her name was, but instead they put it on a Japanese wrestler all because of their partnership with New Japan at the time. And what happened? Because of the fact that they didn't give Medusa the title and the fact that one of her final opportunities at the title was a match to where if she lost, she would have to go into retirement for a while. Really shows you how much Bischoff and Hogan think of wrestling. Now, I'm not trying to say Ho Hogan doesn't respect women's wrestling. He, people say he says it's a gimmick. Well, to him it might be a gimmick, but he's smart enough to know that it brings in the fans, especially the male audience. But, I think, honestly, as much as I respect some of the things he's done, even if they've been controversial, I have to say that it's not all Hogan. I have to say it's Eric Bischoff. Because, like I say, you go back in time, instead of, like say, putting the title on Medusa, making her the first WCW Women's Champion, they instead use a Japanese women's wrestler. They don't even give the title to Medusa at any point. And instead, her final opportunity is a match to where if she loses, she must retire. And guess what? She loses, so she has to go into retirement for about a, for, for a couple of months or about a year or so. And then to top that all off, what do they do? To try to build on what is seemingly the success of the women's division in WCW, which really didn't get featured prominently, what does Eric Bischoff try to do to, I guess, show that women's wrestling doesn't have a place in wrestling or even a women's championship division? He puts together a women's cruiserweight division. That's right, a women's cruiserweight division. And what happens? Yeah, we get a champion out of that, but pff, we barely get anything. And the matches don't even get televised live. Instead, we get these tapings from a nearly empty-seated arena that's going to host Monday Nitro. whoop de doo So basically, you get what I'm saying. It's not all Hogan. And it's not the fact that Bubba the Love Sponge is a friend of Hogan's. It's the fact that Eric Bischoff probably has more say in this than anything. Because Eric Bischoff had a lot of say with the women's division that could have been a great division in WCW had it been done right and had the right women, female wrestler like Medusa been given the title instead of giving it to some Japanese female wrestler who are some of the best women wrestlers in the world I, I'm not denying that and I'm not trying to be a racist here but had he done it the right way and pushed Medusa or even, or even chose a babyface women's wrestler to win the title and pushed her from Japan, that was from Japan, and pushed her the right way, 
That division, even along with its so-called cruiserweight division, which really was a joke, and I'm not trying to say it wasn't a joke or was, if he would have done everything the right way, those divisions could have been a success, but instead he didn't. That's why I believe Eric Bischoff is one of the people responsible for Awesome Kong being released from TNA, or being granted her release. Because this is the way it looks like to me, and it's just my opinion. This is an opportunity that Eric Bischoff, maybe even Hogan, have been looking forward to. You see, Eric Bischoff is the kind of guy that, let's go back to Monday Night when he was the general manager of Monday Night Raw. He may have just been an on-screen character, but because of what he did in WCW, he had a lot of influence back there, back in WWE. Let's not deny that. He probably had some influence when he first arrived. And he came up with the, and I wouldn't doubt it, that if he's the one that came up with the idea of, Let's abolish the hardcore title. Let's abolish the European title, which were probably some good moves at the time. But then he's also the one that said, let's abolish the Intercontinental title. The Intercontinental title. And what do you get left with? The world title and the tag titles. whoop de doo Right? Basically what I'm saying is this guy just doesn't like certain divisions. Or feels as though certain championships sh shouldn't be around. And that's why I wouldn't be surprised if he had some say in Awesome Kong having her get being granted her release, as well as probably saying to himself, this is what they needed to finally put the knockout tag team title division to rest. Because think about it, to him, and maybe even Hogan, the knockout tag team division shouldn't have even came to be. But, yeah, you know, I do agree, with, but yeah, getting back to at the beginning of this, I do agree that it was a stupid move by TNA, but hey, if Bischoff and Hogan have any say in it, especially Bischoff, don't be surprised by it. Because like I said, this is, a po this is possibly what they were rating for, because one of three things is going to happen. One of three things. One, they could give Hamada a new tag team partner to hold the titles with. Two, two, they could either vacate the titles and have another tournament, or three, they can come up with some kind of story to where the beautiful people or Taylor Wilde and Sarita, who or whatever two knockouts, win the titles at a live event and have them walking out with it. And probably the fourth option is they'll just kill the division. That's it. So, and isn't it kind of ironic that one half of the tag team champions is Japanese, and the other half that got released is built from Japan. Isn't it kind of ironic? Because like I said, you go back to when WCW tried the women's division and the women's cruiserweight division, both their champions, first champions, were cracked, and they were from Japan. Like again, I'm not trying to be a racist or anything, and I'm not trying to say anything bad about Japanese female wrestlers, because I do agree, they're some of the best wrestlers in the world. But isn't it kind of ironic? I mean, anyway, I do agree that it was a stupid move. So like I said, one of three options, maybe even four in the work, could happen. One, they could give Hamada a new taking partner to hold the titles with. Two, they could vacate them, have a tournament. Three, they can come up with some lame story that says that... The, these two knockouts won the titles from Hamada and Kong during a live event. Kong got injured, or whatever, or Kong quit. Or four, they can just kill the division right then and there. And that's all I have to say about it. I want to hear your comments. You got any? Let me know. Peace. I'll talk to you later.